This question deals with a 22-year-old woman admit to the, admitted to the hospital because of 10-day history of polyuria and polydipsia. She says that the urge to urinate often awakens her at night. She has been taking lithium carbonate for two years for bipolar disorder. Her dosage was increased six months ago because of recurrent severe manic episodes. Her vital signs are within normal limits. Physical exam shows no abnormalities. Over the next 24 hours, urine exclusion totaled 6.5 liter. Lab studies at this time show a serum sodium concentration of 148 milliequals per liter, serum osmolarity of 315, and urine osmolarity of 75. Administration of desmopressin. After administration of desmopressin, urine output and osmolarity do not change. Which of the following findings in the nephron best describes the urine tubular osmolarity compared with serum osmolarity in this patient? So first of all, what is happening here? This patient is taking lithium. So uh, and six months ago, the lithium dose was um, increased, and now she's having polyuria and polydipsia. What are the toxicities of lithium? The mnemonic is LMNOP, M is for movement, N is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which this patient is having, O is hypothyroidism, and P is for pregnancy problems. It causes abstinence anomaly, and we're going to see um, the, the right atrium is much bigger than the right ventricle, right? That's the Epstein's anomaly. Anyways, this patient is having nephrogenic diabetes insipidus due to, um, due to the lithium. So now let's look at the lab values. We see that the sodium is uh, 148, which is a little high, the, the serum sodium. And then we see 315 um, is the osmolarity. That is also high, the serum osmolarity. That's also high. And then we also see that the urine osmolarity is 75, which is ridiculously low, which is due to the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. But the question is saying, which of the following findings in, this, in the nephron best describes the tubular osmolarity compared with the serum in this patient? So they want us to compare tubular osmolarity with serum osmolarity. So first, let's look at how it will be in a normal patient, and then we're going to look at the pathology. So this is a picture of a normal nephron where we can see that, let's start from the beginning, we can see that outside we have 300 and inside we have 300. So here at the very top we have, um, we have the same osmolarity. So this is going to be isotonic. Okay, so if we draw it here, if we start drawing it here at the very beginning, inside and outside is going to be isotonic. Okay, so iso. As it's going down, see at this level there is 600 and there is 600. Again, it's isotonic here as well. And at the very end, at the loop of Henley, when we come down the uh, descending limb, at the loop of Henley, outside and inside it's going to be around 1200. So again, this is going to be, until here, it's going to be isotonic. Okay, and then we move on to the other side. So now we are looking at the ascending uh, limb, right? And we see that here it's 400, outside it's 600, okay? So now we have 400 outside, uh, inside, and 600 outside. So now we can say that the tubular is going to be hypotonic, okay? Hypotonic. And as we even go up, we can see that this is about 100 and this would probably be around 300. So it's even more hypotonic. So at the, at the DCT, 100 and 300 is still hypo. Okay. As we move down here through the collecting duct, now the collecting duct varies from 100 to 1200. So it will vary uh, from person to person or from urine sample to urine sample depending on what what food the patient ate, what drink the patient drank. So that is going to differ. So we can see that iso, iso, hypo, hypo. This is what it is in normal patient. And we'll talk about 
why it's ISO and why it's a hypo, hypo in a second. But let's go back to the question. Now the question says that this patient, um, which of the following is findings in the kidney best describes the tubular osmolarity compared with serum in this patient. Now this patient is uh, suffering from nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. And if you read a little carefully, a little up, they, they said that they gave him desmopressin, but it didn't work. It did not change the urine or serum osmolarity. Where is that? Um, he, his urine excretion is 6.5 liters. Lab studies at this time show the serum sodium of 148, urine osmolarity 315, urine 75. After administration of desmopressin, urine output and urine osmolarity do not change. Okay? So they do not change. So that means his collecting duct is um, screwed up. Okay? Because the ADH does not change here. So what is the patient's osmolarity going to be at the level of PCT? I guess it's going to be isotonic. There is no problem with that. What is going to be the effect at juxtaglomerular apparatus? Now, where exactly is our juxtaglomerular apparatus? So let's say this is our nephron, and this is the glomerulus, and this is, let's say, the efferent, and this is the efferent, okay? The macula densa is going to be right here, and the juxtaglomerular apparatus is going to be in this region. So juxtaglomerular glomerular apparatus is reading what concentration is going to be in the macula densa. So what do we see in macula densa? We see that the in the macula densa it's hypotonic. Osmolarity is going to be hypotonic in this patient and in a normal patient. Now what about medullary collecting duct? Now that's where the pathology is. The, uh, the, the receptors, the ADH receptors are defective because this patient has nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. And that's why this patient's urine osmolarity is so low. Um, and that's why this patient is going to have hypotonic um, urine at the medullary uh, collecting duct portion because it cannot really reabsorb water back. So in this case, the choice is going to be F, isotonic, hypotonic, hypotonic. So before moving on to the next, uh, next point, I just want to say that the descending limb is permeable to water okay the water can come out and the interstitium is uh, hyperosmolar as a result there is isotonic here and here because yes water is going to come out and it's going to kind of balance the tonicity of interstitium and the tubules but as the ascending limb is going up this ascending limb is impermeable to water Okay, so water is kind of trapped inside. As a result, making the this segment of the nephron uh, hypotonic because water can come out, but electrolytes can, right? Electrolytes can come out, but water cannot come out, making this segment hypotonic. 